Good evening, everyone. I hope everyone that was over in Allen's had a great time, because I know I did. And um, husband will be in here shortly. He will participate randomly like he always does. He went out to do chicken duties. Uh, I think I had like a minute left, so I went ahead and was like, let's just go ahead. They know I'm here, so let, let, let's just go ahead and do this. And I haven't watched... I haven't watched Priscilla's yet, um, and since I did watch Alan's, I've seen what he got, what, six minutes in, because we got to go for part two tomorrow. Um, poor, poor dude, couldn't even make it five seconds in, and he was already pausing the screen. Uh um, so I have, unlike, you know, normally I, I don't watch, um, thank you, Priscilla. Uh, normally I don't watch it beforehand, but you know, I was going to make an exception this time so I could watch Alan. Um, <laughs> a poor, poor guy. Nella, you were, you were missed in Alan's chat because I was there. Priscilla was there. Of course, Alan was there and they all said that, uh, we were just missing you. I let everybody know you had a, a long day at work. Um, so I got you back, girl. <laughs> uh, let's see. All thanks to Tasha. Uh, it'll go to the, the, the chicken budget. Um, so <laughs> Priscilla has the Sinatra toy fund. I've got the chicken and goat budget. How's that? Um, I was so, well, I'm glad you were listening. He didn't get very far into there, did he? Uh, so, uh, the chicken budget sounds so cute. Those chickens, I got, uh, I got my shipment alert that they were shipped yesterday. So, um, they're, they're, my new chickens are on their way. We got the five out there. He's going to bring them back in the house because it's still a little, it's still a little too cold outside for them. We tried last night and I felt like a bad chicken mama. So we brought him in the house. Um, we brought him back in the house. So, um, okay. So if you watched, I, it, if you didn't catch Alan, watch his first, 30, his 30 minutes from 30 minutes ago, um, uh, he, he has to do a part two because he did not realize the gems that were available to him for this, this vlog, or we're going to call this a vlog, this rant that she has. Um, so I can't, I mean, I know the basis of it, obviously. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. Um, I'm pretty sure my husband is going to hear some more things that I said during Alan's that I didn't type in the chat, but, um, so uh, as we all know, uh, this is country shade tree after dark. And I'm just drinking water. You're not getting anything spicy in the water in the drinks um even though i thought about it uh let's see i spit my water out when she's when she says she has muscles <laughs> I, I really thought about i really thought about making a bloody mary uh, bloody mary because spring break is over it's dad's week so the kids I took them to school this morning they're at dad's house this week so um <laughs> and and they like to give me a run for my money <laughs> 
Oh, her and yeah, her and Shakara should like do some kind of um like muscle competition. That would be great. That would be great. Start punching air and slapping the table because this bitch got us fucked. Oh, yeah, no. Mm. Uh when we let's see, I had my laptop sitting up with the chat with Alan's chat, but I had my phone. What you need to plug it in. I have my phone on listening to it because the sound on my computer is not the greatest unless I have my earbuds in. So um, he's, he heard her say something or he heard Alan say something. He whipped his head around. I swear to goodness. I thought my husband was going to get whiplash. He was like, what the, what? did I just hear her right so you know he he is probably he's going to have some things to input um in parts of it um I don't know if I want to wait till he gets in here to start or not um he's going to be playing his cheesy ass space call of duty game it's not called I give him a hard time anyways it's like Call of Duty, but like space Call of Duty. My, all, my eyes rolled so far back, I can see my own. But I'm pretty sure that after the other day's video, my eyes are recovering. But I'm from them straining. Um, But they're probably going to be strained again after this. Because I'm pretty sure I know I'm going to roll my eyes. So, um, if you've never been in the chat before, welcome to the chat. We appreciate you joining in. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I, I'm still, he I, actually, you know what? My husband asked the other day, I wonder what Yar thinks. And I said, um, uh, I said he was literally in the video for what one whole minute out of a 41 minute video he was in the video for one minute just i couldn't believe it i got my drinks and snacky all right shana good job he's a paid actor he really he really has to be I mean, seriously <laughs> an extra i think um Bruno has the supporting role, to be honest. Because we see Bruno more than anything. Her dark girl, that mm. uh wait, hold on. What did your husband say when he told him? Um, actually, Priscilla, I didn't tell him, he told me. I was out. With the uh, doing my chores, and I get a text from him, and he was like, "You have got to be fucking kidding me!" And I was like, "I'm sorry, what?" Because I didn't understand. I knew that um, I was getting messages going off on my phone, and I was like, "Huh? What are you talking about? I thought maybe I had done something." And he was like, that waste of flesh is pregnant. And I knew immediately what he was talking about. <laughs> so then I checked my other messages and I'm like, oh, hell, I'm being summoned. <laughs> they're, so, they're, they, they're, they're summoning me. <laughs> He, he, he is, he is my hype man. So he keeps me, he keeps me up to date if I'm not up to date. And, and I was actually outside with my phone. We all know there is a rule here that I am, I have to take my, my phone out with me if I go outside. So the phone was with me. I was just ignoring it because, um, I was, I didn't fall. So I didn't really need my phone and I wasn't taking pictures. 
I messaged Priscilla, wake up, the silverback is pregnant. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry, Jennifer, but you got to hear my voice. That should, that should have made it just a tiny bit better. <laughs> I ruined your Sunday by going live. Mel was sad that she missed it. <laughs> Shana, Shana comes back from her mental, uh, a mental health break. And she probably already needs to get and an, go on another one. <laughs> Glad I can break it to you, Shayna. I'm glad you didn't have to go to Instagram to see it. <laughs> Are you still having now, Shayna? Shayna, I tried to tell you that your morals. Oh, thank you, heart and soul. Your morals and judgment are perfectly fine. The chickens have arrived in their airplane. <laughs> it's what I called it. He's putting them in their, their home for the moment. <laughs> okay. So we have, if you have not liked the stream, go like it. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Go like it. Um, and we're, we're going to go ahead and start now because this, you know, we're 10 minutes in, 11, 12 minutes in now. So. That's Shana. That's what we're, we, we, we are in this together. We have to hang on each other and we have to reassure each other at this point. So, okay. I may actually send my, send him in there to get me something else to drink mainly because I have a headache. I have water, but I don't think, I, I don't think that's going to require, I think this is going to require more. So let's, get this on here. And while I'm at it, I want to specify that this is a reaction channel. It is my opinion. It is for entertainment value. I am going to probably be an asshole and I'm okay with that. I am mean and I know I am mean. I don't need to be told I'm mean. Um, there no medical we are not giving medical advice we are not medical well okay i'm not a medical professional my husband is in the healthcare industry hi he's here <laughs> so he he can give some medicine medical information okay. but he is not a doctor i felt i have to say that because People are dumbasses. <laughs> Please be an asshole as our voice. Oh, I, I think you're in for this one because I was already ranting and raving while we were ranting, not raving, but ranting while we were watching. Um, uh, yeah, we're not medical professionals um, and it doesn't matter because she'll find the one that she wants. She'll find the one that holds her hand and coddles her and pats her ass. <laughs> Heidi, I'm a nurse. She's obese and high-risk person. You are not wrong. We know. Yes. Yes. <sighs> okay. So. So, everybody, hi. If you are just now getting here. Um. And if I don't say hi to you personally, hi, everyone. And um, I think we are going to go through, I got a request from Erica to go through her comments. So this might be a little bit longer than normal. Um, and I do have her at 125 because, can you do me a favor? Did you make me a drinky drink? Why are you looking at me like that? What do you want? Play me. With the tequila. Yeah. With the Matthew McConaughey tequila. I don't condone drinking and vlogging or streaming just for myself. <laughs> okay. 
Um, okay, so I have her at 1.25 because I've noticed that sometimes when I have her faster, um, it's spicy. It'll be spicy BB cakes because I get the spicy mix. Um, I noticed that um, when I have her on faster, I miss things. And I think this is, um, this needs, I need to hear everything. Uh, let's see. Wait, hold on. I saw something, a question. Uh, M and Laura, there's Matthew McConaughey. It has, he, Matthew McConaughey has a tequila. It is, I will have to send you the name, um, to it. Be, it, it was, it's one of those things where, um, uh, I went in and they were doing, oh, my chicken. Uh, they were doing, um, samples at total wine and more. We have total wine. We have specs for liquor stores. And then of course we have the little mom and pop ones, but total wine was doing, um, samples and I had just some random tequila in my hand because he drinks Bloody Marys I drink Bloody Marias because they have tequila so yes the Pantalones tequila by Matthew McConaughey I got the Blanco because I have this thing against the the darker colored alcohol except for beer uh, but I can't drink beer anyway uh, so that is the, it is the smoothest tequila I've tasted and my mom actually tasted it and she was like, holy crap. Holy crap. Uh, I, I, I might need to go get that. So yeah. Uh, and I, <laughs> I didn't have my ID with me. So I had to use my husband as verification that I was old enough because he was, he was, he was buying. What am I going to say? He had the money. <laughs> Sorry, Mel. I mean, I know, I know, I know you had a hard Saturday night. <laughs> so, okay, let's, I've done that. And I'm not going to play the, the stupid music in the background because it's just distracting too. Um, so, all right, let's, are y'all ready? Y'all let me know you're ready. Because we all got to buckle up and hold on to each other. We're going to have like a little kumbaya circle afterwards, I think. Damn Irish husband. <laughs> and see, I have a Scottish husband. <laughs> Let's point out the turtle. Um, yeah, I noticed that we're wearing the Jim Teddy Coat um, Chin Hider 3000. So... We're going to start off with a bang with that. All right. So I am just doing a little drive and talk. I don't know if I'm going to post this. I'm just doing a little drive and talk. I don't know if I'm going to post this. She always says that. Um, so, yeah. Pardon this angle. I just, this is the only way I can film in my car. And I'm driving. This is what, okay. We all know that I hate when she vlogs in her car anyways but now i really hate it because you are with child you are barren or not barren <laughs> that was the wrong thing to say you are with child now you have proven that you are not barren um and there's nothing wrong with that remember nothing wrong with that um but honey you are now still proving <laughs> <laughs> you guys, this is going to be a long one. <laughs> uh, chin privilege. Holy shit. Driving around right now and kind of processing something that happened to me yesterday. Uh, and I am. I'm How do you, why, why do you process it? process it the day after uh we know where tesla doesn't drive itself no it doesn't because they didn't pay to have that feature put on their tesla uh, as well as not getting um a different color 
Oh, that's delicious. I can't tell her to tequila in it. Thank you. I'm armed and ready now, people. I'm double fisting drinks. I have water here too. Okay. So does anybody do does anybody do that? Like they're still thinking about it the next day? Or why don't you just think about it like right then? Where's the nicotine jacket? She she didn't like that one. It probably washed her out, Kelly. I'm still at this point not sure if I want to share this or not because I don't know. I just I know. I know there's going to be backlash, but I also feel like it's really important to talk about. Why? Okay. And here's my other question. Why does she always say, I don't know if I'm going to post it, but she always posts it. Give me a fucking break. Give me a fucking break. This and over my, you know, long time here on YouTube, I've always shared when these kinds of things have happened to me, (laughs) when I have felt, I don't know, discriminated against because of my size or... Yes, You're yes. not getting discriminated against your size at the doctor. At the doctor. Just treated differently, rather, maybe. No, doesn't want the liability of somebody that size. Exactly. Honey, you're getting ahead of us. Stop. And I just feel like it's something to talk about, something important to talk about. So I am currently uh, 10 and a half weeks pregnant. Okay. 10 and a half weeks. Shiner. Can you, can you excuse yourself, Shina? Oh. Come on, buddy. <laughs> He's completely ignoring you. <laughs> and I've been going to the same OBGYN now for a couple of years. And no, I had a miscarriage with them last year, last June. And I really, I really love my practice. I loved my practice. Okay. If you have been going to the same OBGYN for as long as she says she has. Seriously, you're just gonna, you're, you're just gonna, okay. I won't be going there anymore. Yesterday I had my first <laughs> appointment with a doctor. Um, Priscilla gave you $5. Oh, thank you. He says, thank you. <laughs> because my eight week appointment was just a, with the ultrasound tech. So this appointment I had yesterday was with my doctor, my first doctor appointment, going through everything that's coming up, kind of giving me the rundown, did like a pelvic exam and you know, all that. So I will say my original OB, I loved so much and I got notified about a month ago that she was leaving the practice and I'm like, oh, that sucks. I love her. She was so amazing during my miscarriage last year. She was just extremely empathetic. Just, I adored her with all my heart. So I was bummed because I was prepared to go through this pregnancy with her. So. I got assigned to a new person. So, okay, wait. Was she leaving the practice or... She, wait, I need to go back. I got to go back. Did she leave the practice or is she retired? I adored her with all my heart. So I was bummed because I was... The girl that she was leaving the practice and I'm like, oh. Okay, well, if she's leaving the practice, why didn't she just follow where she's going? Too easy. Does it just make too, too much sense for me? I mean, I don't think they can, like, say where she's... I would assume that they... Oh, just, oh, Lord have mercy. That sucks. I love her. She was so amazing during my miscarriage last year. She was just extremely am- Okay, but here, here's the other thing about that doctor. The doctor told her that the HCG, HGC, whatever the, the letters are, I can't think of the letters. It is almost 8 o'clock at night, and I have been parenting today. Um, oh, Alex, if you think pregnancy brain is bad, wait till you have mom brain. Mom brain is a million times worse. Um, but the the heart the doctor told her last when she had her miscarriage when she was pregnant last time that the misca- that the hormone didn't um she didn't need to worry about that at seven seven weeks when it was four hundred or whatever. Give me a break. Oh, geez. At that point, I would have found with someone who does so much research, Google couldn't tell her that 400 was not um, a good number for seven weeks. 
so pathetic. Just, I adored her with all my heart. So I was bummed because I was prepared to go through this pregnancy with her. So I got assigned to a new person. I met with her yesterday and unfortunately the vibe wasn't wasn't great from the beginning. I'm, I'm very, I'm like kind of, I'm overly friendly. I want to like connect with you. I want to connect with you. I want to feel a connection with you. Like this is a big deal for me. This is my first, well, it's my second pregnancy, but like I don't have a child as of yet because I've. I, I want to connect with you. I want, okay. So I understand the need to have a good rapport with your doctor. I get that. Totally, totally get that. But your doctor's not going to hold your fucking hand and not going to text you, hey, bestie, how's your morning going? That that That's not what the doctor's there for. They're not there to connect with you on a spiritual level. They are not your friend. Just like your parent should not be your friend when you are a teenager. Uh, <laughs> Nancy. So there's that. Only gotten pregnant once before and I miscarried. So this is like all very new to me. It's very foreign. It's scary. There's a lot going on. And like I said, I've been at this practice for a while and I was like, well, that's fine. Like I'll go with any doctor there because I haven't met anyone in that practice. that's not like phenomenal. Even the people like at the reception desk, ultrasound, blood work, everyone there is just. She, I say rapport. She probably does, doesn't even know what that word means. She doesn't understand what rapport means. Her her gastric bypass told her, hey, yes, queen. Yeah. Mm. Her doctor, her gastric bypass doctor failed her if they told her she should get pregnant a year after. And they were okay with just the 90 pounds that she lost. So sweet. So I meet with the doctor. Yarman's with me, my husband. And we're in the room. Wait, Yarman's her husband? I had no idea. I had no idea Yarman was her husband. Did y'all? Boom. And we're starting the process of talking about everything. And she says to me, you know, we have a BMI cap here, right? And I'm like, no, no, no one told me this. She's like, yeah, we put it into practice last summer, um, a BMI cap. And my heart like immediately just. I want to know what the BMI cap is. I know she's going to really say something, but. I want to know what the BMI cap is. Sink. Because I'm like, first of all, I just didn't even know that this was like a thing at some practices. I, I, I and You didn't know this was a thing? You didn't know that people, doctors, while it is an antiquated system, like system, I don't want to call it a system, but I guess that's the best description for it. BMI is old but they use it for some reasons uh you got bmi it, you got weight loss surgery um based on, based on your bmi so i guess the bmi wasn't bad for you then huh fucking cunt oh already <laughs> already bmi is such bullshit and i'm so glad that doctor Oh, it's bullshit now, but you when you got the weight loss surgery, it wasn't bullshit. Okay. They don't even have to use BMI to look at you, honey. They know you're overweight. You're not even overweight. You are morbidly obese. You're not even just obese. You are morbidly obese. Period. End of story. Fuck you. Doctors are starting to realize that because health and weight are already not synonymous yes they are you might want to close the door honey <laughs> health and weight are synonymous you can say my blood work is perfect you can say uh that's the only thing you really can say because we can see that you are fat alex we can see that you are fat <sighs> Holy shit. They, health and weight are the fucking same. Yes, but also, I'm very heavy because I've been working out since I... You are very heavy because you put shit in your mouth. Sorry, honey. <laughs> oh, 
oh my God, you are not heavy because, hold on, I'm going to do what Shana said. I'm taking a sip. You need to take a step back. <laughs> you might want to listen and watch what she's saying. No, because I don't need my blood pressure that high. <laughs> you are not just been big your oh i took tequila that don't worry shane i did you are not big because you are just big you are big because you eat like shit you are big because you did not take your fucking gastric bypass seriously you lost the hundred pounds that you thought you just needed to lose and you were done plain and simple everyone that you quote unquote knew um, said they lost a hundred pounds and got pregnant. That was your threshold period. We're not stupid. We know how it works. Plain and simple. I was like 10 years old. I've been going to the gym since I was a child. You have not been going to the gym since you were a child. You are not allowed to be in a gym. At 10, years old. at 10 years old without an adult within three feet of you period give me a fucking break i've been on diets since i was a child but more than anything i've been working out since and if you've been on a diet since you were a child you might want to look at your mother for that problem period if she puts you on jenny craig since you were 12 you know since you posted that instagram story of you can't hurt my feelings i've been on jenny craig since i was 12. you need to look at who you were who who put you on those diets you need to look at who is making you work out at 10 years old quote unquote working out at 10 years old Maybe it was your mom. Maybe it was your grand. Maybe it was Mimi. I don't care. But any of them. None of it worked. Probably because you were eating bullshit. Like what comes out of your mouth. I was a child. I recently lost 100 pounds over the last couple of years. When I, had I lost a cup, 100 pounds over the last couple of years. No, you lost the 100 pounds within the first eight months of your gastric bypass, and then you started gaining it back. You're such a fucking lying cunt. I gastric bypass. And I've kept like 95% of it off. 95% of it off. Okay. Yeah. You already said that you gained back 20 after your miscarriage. We can go back and find that video. Just like you said Yar had a bougie loft apartment before he moved in with you. We all know that's wrong. Give me a break. Off. So I have a long history of struggling with weight. And I, I just hate BMI so much because I am very heavy. Because I'm very muscular. Oh my God. Babe. I'm sorry. I'm big because I'm muscular. I weigh a lot because I'm muscular. She realizes that fat and muscle weighs the exact same. Like 16 ounces of fat is the same 16 ounces of muscle. Like, really? Really? No, mm -mm -mm -mm. Those, those thighs that I see are not showing me muscle. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Like a high percentage of my, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of fat in there too. I'm it's all fat. It's not just a, a little fat. It's all fat, Alex. It's all fat. I'm not saying I'm like not fat. <laughs> her, brain, her brain just froze hearing that. Um, Alan said that he was leaking brain from his ears after hearing that. So we're, we're all there. My brain cells just started dying off hearing that. But I have a lot of muscle and it makes me heavier. And with that, no. it makes my BMI. Oh my God. Having a lot of muscle does not make you heavier. It doesn't. 
having a lot of muscle, you would look thinner if you had a lot of muscle, Alex. You're just fucking fat. Period. Fat and delusional. That's what you are. Mm. So mm. much higher. And as someone who's worked out now for over consistently over the last year, who's worked heavily on eating more balanced, who's lost a significant amount of weight, mm -hmm. who has like perfect blood work, perfect. Uh... Somebody said to get your uh, paramedic supplies ready. Apparently I'm going to have a heart attack. <laughs> who's worked out now for over consistently over the last year, who's worked heavily on eating more balanced consistently over a year okay consistently over a year uh but not when she went on vacation not when she uh did curvy connection not when she did it on vacation again not when she was sick um but that's consistent okay um and eating balanced okay so are the bagels all the pasta um, all the sweet treats, the smart sweets that she has, all the Alani's that she has, all the milkshake coffees that she has, um, all the cookies that she, the, the crumble taste test, those are eating balanced, right? Those are, those, that's a balanced eating, right? It must be those berries that she eats that she's counting as being balanced. Berries and cherries. Oh, the Korean corn dogs. Yeah, I can't remember that. Oh, she had a she did have a salad that one time where she went on a rant that time too. Um, oh, and the fall fair. That's right. She went to the fall fair and she had the pizza, the pickle pizza, um, and the pickle lemonade. Um, but she does have oh, Erica, I'm gonna take it. Uh she does have the protein blast of the cheese sticks for five grams of protein. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Protein blast. Who's lost a significant amount of weight. Who has like perfect blood work. Perfect. Uh perfect blood work means bullshit at your age, Alex. I, I can attest to that. I had the perfect blood work at 348 pounds at 31 years old. A1C was great. All of it. All of it was perfect. But I was still 350 pounds. When you hit 40, Alex, talk to me then. I, I probably won't be watching you then, and you probably won't be on YouTube, hopefully. Um, but... Uh, um, yeah, just wait, just wait. You won't be, you're, you're not going to be perfect for much longer. I can tell by your knuckles and how dark they are. Your acne says it all too. Uh, blood pressure. Like I just hate BMI. And I don't, the whole blood pressure thing, I call bullshit on that. So much. I just think there are a million and one other better ways to measure. Small. I um, don't normally like that word, like the word either, but she's earned it. So there's, she's earned it. Health. And it's just, it's honestly just another way to discriminate against fat people. Fat discrimination is not a thing at the doctor. It's just not. They are there to provide health advice, period. Your health and your weight coexist, much like you and your roommate. Um, so you can't actually be discriminated against for your weight at the doctor's office. I'm so sorry to hear that or to tell you that. Oh my God. So sorry. I shouldn't read at the same time I'm talking. You have to... <laughs> 
that's my problem is I have the skinny privilege and she doesn't. That's my problem, babe. I have skinny privilege. Although when I look in the mirror, I still don't feel like I have skinny privilege. So <laughs> oh Lord have mercy. Good God. Discriminate she's discriminated at her um what was it? Dermatologist. So her dermatologist has fat shamed her. The um health insurance has not health insurance, life insurance has discriminated against her. They're fat phobic and fat shamed her because of her quote unquote build like a linebacker. Um, okay. So if we're all keeping the list, let's, let's, let's make sure we know that. And show that society just wants to cater to a specific kind of person. So society does not want to cater to a specific type of person in the health department, in the medical area. They want you to be healthy. Being th over 300 fucking pounds is not healthy, Alex. It's not. Oh, when she says this, my heart immediately drops because I actually have just had a scare a couple days before with some bleeding and I'm already going into this appointment very anxious, just dying to like make sure the baby still has a heart. She brings this anxiety on herself, period. Th this is not a diagnosed anxiety. She brings this on herself. When you actually have anxiety, you are not anxious about every little thing in your life. heartbeat make sure everything looks okay and this is like the first thing that's kind of dropped on me in my appointment and I'm kind of just taken aback and like I'm choking back tears immediately like I am hormonal even if I wasn't hormonal I'm, I'm hormonal oh my god I'm gonna use my pregnancy for every excuse in the book choking back tears like this is a lot of information to just be dropped on me when I'm already highly emotional exhausted scared shitless of losing my baby etc and she's like yeah we put into practice last summer um but like there was no empathy behind it it was like I, I was kind of expecting her to be like i know it sucks i'm sorry no they they don't need to have empathy for you when it is a policy when it is a written rule in their handbook there is no empathy you don't have to have empathy every time when it is a hard fucking fact alex it's this just not empathy is not needed all the damn time all the damn time. It is something that they put in their policy because they don't want to be sued for anything that might happen. Period. It's like the lady here in Texas that rode the Texas Giant. She was advised not to read ride the Texas Giant because of her size. Don't ride it. We don't want you. You, you can't ride it. You're too big. You're not. You are not the what is it called you what what was that sign that said physical you had the physical attributes you don't have the phys special physical attributes to mm -hmm. ride this ride alex you don't have the physical attributes that they can cater to because you are over a, a certain size and they don't they're not covering that in their um um, practices insurance. That's what it boils down to. They are looking out for you and your child and themselves. But you have to look out. For, they have to look out for themselves too. They can't just look out just for you, but they have to look out for themselves too because this is their livelihood. Like, I don't agree with it. But she just kind of said it in like this tone. I was just like, yeah, but out of luck. She's like, at least you're early. She didn't say your shit out of luck. Those are your own words. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you that they probably said it a whole lot different. This is sympathy, Alex, wanting sympathy. I need sympathy from my army of stupids. 
in your pregnancy, so it won't be hard to switch. But I will say you're only 10 pounds away from hitting that limit. Do you think you could only gain 10 pounds during your pregnancy? This right here. She is going to be mad because they asked her to only gain 10 pounds. You can only gain 10 pounds. She wants the excuse of being pregnant to be, she wants, yeah, she wants this to be the reason why she gains more weight so she can eat for two, so she can eat whatever the fuck she wants, so she can go to Chick-fil-A and get her um, number one with a side of chicken nuggets. So she can go to McDonald's and get her Diet Coke. So she can go to Starbucks and get her cake pops. That's what she's looking for. She wants someone to tell her she can gain however much weight she wants. Most doctors only want you to gain 10 to 20 pounds as it is. It doesn't matter how much you weighed before you were pregnant. They don't care. They, they just, they don't want you to be a glutton while you're pregnant because if you're a glutton while you're pregnant you have to get that weight off after the baby is born so which leads me to a side story i went to a, a girl i went to high school with tiny all of our lives tiny 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 all of our lives um isn't it more high risk hold on because of it, it be, yes, I would say yes, but I didn't discuss pregnancy with my doctor because I'm, it wasn't it wasn't in the forefront of my mind. Um, but because it's it, it it is high risk because of the absorption um, situation, right? Do what? Uh, wouldn't her pregnancy be high risk because of her bypass and her absorption absorption of vitamins yeah, and, and, and her size and, and her size? Yeah, I mean, she, honestly, she shouldn't be this size after <clears throat> bypass. Period. Women who are this size usually do not have successful pregnancies. Correct. Or they have congenital defects on the baby because. Of different factors, maybe not anything that they're doing, but just different factors. Right. So, what I was going to say was, was I have a friend or a girl I went to high school with. She um, was tiny with all our lives. She's been tiny, very thin. She has thin privilege, um, <sighs> but she had preeclampsia um, during her pregnancy, and she gave birth at twenty six weeks. Baby's 10 years old today, or she's now 10 years old, but it came with some very severe uh, consequences of the pre the preeclampsia came with very severe consequences, not at her own, not at her own doing or anything. It was just, that was, that's what happened to her. Um, so preeclampsia can happen to anybody of any size, obviously, but she is clearly pre has a predisposed disposition predisposed. predisposed that she could possibly have pre preeclampsia along with gestational diabetes and anything else and i'm like no <laughs> i mean i haven't gained anything yet but i'm only two and a half i haven't gained anything yet i haven't gained anything yet uh while i've been pregnant but i gained you know all the way back that i lost half weeks like i got a long way to go do i feel comfortable oh, like i will hit the cap of the bmi limit if i gain 10 pounds she's like we can still care for you and have you in the practice until you gain the 10 pounds if you want to wait to switch but i'm sure you want to switch sooner to get more comfortable with and build a relationship with your new doctor i mean at least they here here's the thing at least they were up front right off the bat listen we have a policy this is what it is. Sorry, you don't like it. Here you go. I mean, what was she want to wait until they had had uh till she was 34 weeks? Yeah. And like my mind is just swirling 
it's swirling. And when she said, like, you think you could only gain 10 pounds? I'm like, I'd have to lose weight at that point during my pregnancy because between the baby and fluid and water weight, like. Oh, my God. The baby and fluid and water weight. Are you fucking kidding me? Everything is everyone else's fault but her own. She's even blaming her fucking baby for weight that she's going to gain. Can't, mm. there's just no way <laughs> there's just no way and i'm kind of just like i'm kind of panicking at this point because i'm like well where do i go <laughs> I'm, i don't know i'm just I'm, I'm freaking out honestly i'm like so where do i go i just kind of blurted that out and she's like well honestly blank and blank it's like another hospital is the only one that's gonna take you like that and i'm like because they don't want to be deal with the consequences if something happens to you and your child why is it that hard to understand? Holy shit, because they're not dealing with just one life. They're dealing with two lives at that point. You know, she's not an adult. She's not. Now I don't, I don't have a choice now. That's the only hospital that will take me without a BMI limit. And she said it's because the only reason is because it can be riskier with if I need anesthesia during the birth, which doesn't even ever always happen. You know, it's not. But. <sighs> Sorry. Yes, it doesn't always happen. But what the hell happens if you need an emergency C-section? My God. I You need to think about the bigger picture, not just, oh, I'm going to push this kid out my vagina. And oh, everything is going to be so happy, hunky-dory. Fuck me. Oh, my God. I, I don't know. I just think it's... <laughs> it's it just felt absolutely shocking and like i told a few close friends about it and they were just like what and they're they're oh my god her even her close friends are are in enabling her thin they were like i didn't even know that was like thin. oh they're thin i didn't even know that was a thing well because you're you because they're not 10 pounds away from the fucking bmi limit you dumbass twat like i would never even have to think that's a thing because of thin privilege and like you just don't even y'all i am so tired of these made-up words happening thin privilege vagina privilege I, what the hell <sighs> penis privilege dog privilege blue eye privilege good god think that that is something that people would deal with and it just made me feel the way it was delivered, especially, like, it sucks enough. And I'm like, why did no one, don't you think when this was put into play last summer, like, a notice should be sent out or something? Yeah, this is your notice, honey. This is your notice. You, They noticed, they notified you when you came in for your appointment. That's your notice. They're not going to send it out to everybody don't you think like people should be notified i would have switched providers immediately because i don't want to have to worry about if i gain 10 pounds you're gonna boot me and you should worry about gain gaining any weight at this point because you shouldn't be gaining any weight after a fucking gastric bypass what if i show up on delivery day and i thought i only gained 10 and i gained like 11 are you gonna say no no delivery here like what <sighs> they're gonna have you out running a mile before so you can lose that one pound cunt i'm just i don't know i'm very disappointed i just didn't even think this was something i would have to worry about and i know there's gonna be she didn't think her weight was anything that she was gonna have to worry about are you fucking kidding me you had gastric bypass so that you could be healthy and ready for a child but you didn't think your weight was gonna be anything you had to worry about people who are like they have every right to do that you need to lose weight like it's not it's not their fault you're fat it's not your fault you're clearly not a bigger person and this doesn't if you must know someone it doesn't matter if you're a bigger person whether you're a bigger person or a skinny person you know that it's not healthy to weigh 300 plus pounds it's not in your life who's bigger and can you imagine this happening to them it's just scary and now i mean yes it's early 
to me, it doesn't feel so early. 10 weeks for me feels incredibly far because I'm so grateful to have even made it this far right now and have a bomb drop. As you're driving in the car vlogging, but you're worried about being gaining 11 pounds. Okay. So I mean, when you think you're settled, and I love my practice, it's easy. I'm used to the routine. I love going there to have this put on you where it's like, okay, well now you're. Your love that they, that your doctor was holding your hand is what you liked. That's what it is. You got to find something else. It's like, it's just another, another layer of stress with pregnancy. That's already so stressful. Oh, I don't know. Pregnancy shouldn't be stressful. FYI. But talking about these things, it's it's important. As hard as it is, and as much as it opens me up to direct criticism, it's it's important to talk about because I just I just I genuinely did not know that this was a thing. Um, and I did talk. She genuinely did not know that if she weighed over three hundred pounds and got pregnant, that there was going to be some consequences to it. She genuinely didn't know that. Oh, okay. I talked to one of my plus size friends who had a baby already. And she didn't know that this was, she didn't encounter this. She lived somewhere else. She didn't encounter this, but she did experience like weight discrimination at one of her appointments where the doctor was like, you're obese and going to die when she got pregnant. And it's just like, I have. <sighs> weight discrimination. Seen so many incredible, healthy plus size pregnancies online that people share. And actually that I've even known in person, I just hate this stigma with size and health and pregnancy. And it's not to say, it's not to say. She blurred those street signs out like we could read it as she drove by it. My dumbass. Say that there can't be issues from weight, but it's not always going to be from that. And it's not something that we can always just pin it on, put everything on weight. It was just very dehumanizing yesterday. That was dehumanizing. Someone handing you facts was dehumanizing. Give me a fucking break. For her to drop this on me. And then like, then she's going through with the exam. My, my robe. Can you imagine someone walking in and handing you the facts that you have cancer? That's dehumanizing. Oh my God. They dropped it on me. Oh my God. How did they drop it on me? I was not expecting that. Seriously. Okay. That's probably an extreme. I get it. That was an extreme. But seriously, they dropped it on me. Oh, my God. They dropped it on me. How could they do this? It was a little too small. I could barely close the front of it. And now the robe was too small. The, the paper gown was too small. Okay. We're going to complain about the luxurious paper gown that probably ripped anyways. <sighs> I'm sitting there just like naked with a too small robe on. You're, you're, you're complaining. You're fixing to show your vagina to a doctor and you're worried about the robe being too small. They've seen boobs before. Well, why did you have to take your shirt off anyways? Seriously, what, what? I am not confused as why you had to take your shirt off at the doctor's office to just spread your legs and put them in the um, Stirrup. stirrups. Why, why were you? Because, yes, sir. If she has inverted nipples, she has to go through class to teach her baby how to latch. But at 10 weeks, we already have to do that? Look, I'm you don't make saying, up the rules. Yeah. <laughs> Inverted nipples. <laughs> Welcome to Country Shade Tree After Dark, where we talk about inverted nipples. Teaching me about nipples. <laughs> See, I am not 
the only one who is bothered by this whole getting completely naked for your <laughs> OB gin. Like, well, why? I'm, I'm sure you have <laughs> some listeners that have been through this and they could probably explain better, but. See, that's what I said, Jay. Sucks. She's 10 weeks. Why are we talking about nipples? <laughs> Well, it's differentiating between nipples and udders. <laughs> oh my god! Receiving this news, and then having to have like my legs in stirrups, feeling so like just awkward and dehumanized. That's like the best way I can say it. Like I said, I she thought she she felt dehumanized by this. Holy shit! Can you imagine? Oh my god! She needs to look up that. She needs to look up that word. Really, she really needs to look up that word. Oh my god. I don't know if I'm gonna even post this. It's kind of just me processing everything out loud. It just happened yesterday. Um, thank god the baby's fine. At the end of the day, that's all that matters, especially since we had the scare a few days before uh yesterday. So now to find a new a new doctor. I just wanted to share this, talk about how I don't think it's right. And I want to know if you guys have ever I don't want I wanted to talk about how I didn't think it was right. Fucking cry me a river. Fucking cry me an ocean, man. No, don't even cry me an ocean. Cry me a small pond. Even a rain puddle. I don't fucking care. Alexandra. You're ridiculous. Heaven forbid they look out for you and your I'm child. Anything like this before. And if you have and you're comfortable sharing, I'd love to see in the comments um, your experience. I mean, I was going to say, please be kind, but... Please be kind because my feelings can't take it and I am a spoiled brat and I will be rude to you and block you. I'm not going to stop anyone who's not going to be kind. Several days later. Okay, it felt fitting to do the second part to this video also in the car. <laughs> oh, good. We get a second part. So um, I have a, a silver lining to this whole situation. So I ended up finding a new OB because obviously I did not feel comfortable. Um, no, I, I'm, I'm curious. Where is this action in her uh, pregnancy announcement pictures? Where, where, where are these chins at? Y'all let me know. We can put out an Amber Alert for her chins. <coughs> being told I can only gain 10 pounds <laughs> during my pregnancy or I'd hit their BMI limit and not be able to give birth there. Um, so I immediately like went onto my health insurance website and found who's accepted and looked up the best reviews and gave a call to this one place. And I immediately got like really, really good vibes on the phone. Really, really good vibes on the phone. She's just looking for good vibes all around. Like I need good vibes and empathy from my ob gen and they had availability i it was funny when i called i was like hi like do you guys have a bmi limit and they're like what <laughs> i'm like a body mass index limit and they're like no i ended up going to that appointment this morning and switching over and honestly i was such a nervous wreck all morning because i think like as a plus size person you know how anxiety provoking going to a new doctor can be not knowing if they're going to be uh wait you wouldn't um, have to worry about that if you had taken your gastric bypass seriously before you got pregnant. Just an FYI. Shaming or assuming things about you because of your size. Uh, you just They're assuming things about you because of your size because it clearly says that you eat a lot of shit. Never know. You just never know how it's going to be. And there's obviously really great doctors who can talk about weight in a healthy way and a in an appropriate way and then there's some that are just flat out mean <laughs> so you just never know what you're gonna get so i was really nervous. they just flat out mean they're flat out mean by telling me straight up facts oh my god oh my god how horrible are these people nervous all morning um but i went to my appointment and oh my gosh it was great i absolutely loved the midwife that i met with and the good thing is i'm able to continue to request her so she went with a midwife okay um can y'all imagine being that um, doctor's office and seeing that she had had her previous surgeries were lap band, chin lipo, tummy tuck, gastric bypass, and she still weighs 320 pounds. 
Can you just imagine? Like, my mind would be blown. Like, how does that even happen? Uh, Rudy, he actually did not finish it. Uh, so there's a part two tomorrow um, at, I think, 1.30 Eastern because he's in Florida. So, um, yeah, there's a part two to it tomorrow. Because I just, I really connected with her. I actually felt comfortable enough to tell her. Uh, and he said it on that video that he has up. So her why i was switching practices and what had happened to me at the last one and her reaction was literally she went what <laughs> she goes wait 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 let me get this straight they told you you could only gain 10 pounds for your pregnancy and they have a bmi limit and i was so grateful that she was just so empathetic oh so she got someone that was so empathetic to her fat ass self and is okay with her gaining 50 pounds on top of the 315 or 20 that she already weighs. Way to enable. So she found another enabler. Okay. And she also um, confirmed that she agrees that BMI is total crap because of muscle and fat. It's all about like, there's so many more other factors to health and her agreeing with me on that. And just there's so many other factors. Okay. Yeah. She found, she found someone who is going to just, want her money signing my feelings and validating me was huge you know i explained all that had happened and she was just she was absolutely phenomenal so uh, i'm really grateful really grateful that it went well because i was i want the name of this midwife so nobody goes to see her i'm just saying honestly prepared i was mentally prepared for it to not go great and i was prepared to have to continue to hunt to find a doctor that resonated and made me feel comfortable and you know accepted me um and didn't the necklace thing yeah you know fat shaming essentially and oh my god fat shaming fat discrimination fat phobic fuck just overall so pleasant so my message here i wasn't even gonna do a part two to this i don't know maybe it's an update in the vlog but I think it's really important to tell you guys that there are some incredible doctors out there. Please don't settle on a doctor. That there are some incredible doctors that will tell you the fucking truth. Period. They're going to tell you, you can't gain a lot because you already fucking weigh too much. <sighs> Heaven forbid someone hand her a dose of reality. Like, seriously that makes you not feel heard or if you happen to go through what I went through with the BMI limit like I know it sucks it's unfortunate um it, it, it sucks so if you go through that please find another doctor and don't don't stop the hunt though until you find someone that oh, you leave and you're just like oh relieve yes find another doctor that's gonna hold your fucking hand find another doctor that is going to coddle you uh let's see Tiffany has a question for you. Maybe mm -hmm. if she is a certain weight, she won't be able to use the hospital equipment. Yes and no. Actually, a lot of facilities do have um, hoisting equipment. And literally, that's what it is. It's a movable winch on a rail and pulley system that they can use to lift heavy people. And a lot of hospitals start at 250 300 pounds Ugh. they have specialized beds well i mean uh, obviously I mean, at the hospital we went to they had to be over they had to have special because of our weight when we did the gastric bypass oh good grief you feel right it sits right with you because like i said i was prepared to bounce around with who's covered in my insurance until I found someone that I really, really connected with. And I immediately connected with this person. Oh my God. The fact that she thinks she has to connect with somebody. That she has to connect with somebody. Codependent. She's codependent is correct. I loved the vibe of the office. And that really matters because I really liked my first place. And I was very worried. I wouldn't be able to find somewhere that resonated as well. So please advocate for yourself. Please don't. 
she is condoning, hey, be fat ass and get pregnant and, you know, weigh over 300 and something pounds and get pregnant. Well, and again, that's the falsity that she is putting out there, which is yet another reason why she doesn't need to be putting this out there. Mm -hmm. This is this is a disservice to people. Don't settle for health care that doesn't feel right or feels discriminatory. Um, I know it's hard in the moment. It's scary. It's stressful. But um, you got this. I know it's hard. But I just wanted to come on here and you're making it hard, Alex. You're just making it hard. End this video with an update. I authorized to have all my stuff and information and all that jazz released to this new place. And I'm officially tapping out of my old place because for a minute I was going to like stay until I gained the 10 pounds and I'm almost at 12 weeks. I haven't gained anything yet, but like, I, who knows? I'm not, I don't want that pressure. If you can only gain 10 pounds this whole pregnancy. She doesn't want the pressure of not eating too much. Holy shit. She really thinks that most women will just glutton themselves while they're pregnant under the excuse of, I'm eating for two. See, I have a long way to go. That's, that's a, no, 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 no. So anyway, yay for my new doc and the new practice I'm going to. And I would love to hear from you guys if you've ever encountered anything like this. My, the doctor I saw today was like, I've never heard of that. She genuinely was like in shock. She was a younger woman too. And I think a lot of younger doctors are kind of more open to the idea of BMI being a very old school way of measuring health, but her disbelief was, was really great. Um, and it just made me feel very validated. More pregnancy content to come, of course, but I love you guys so much and I will see you soon. Oh, yay. More pregnancy content coming soon. Yay. So excited. Hold on just a second. What do you have in your hand? Sprinkle. Oh. It didn't look, I didn't know what it was. Okay, so hold on. I told you we would go back and look at the comments. So, because I know you guys want to know. So, let's see. <laughs> Maternity clothes will be fat phobic next. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me find the comments. I had them up earlier. Where did they go? Oh, I'm sorry if y'all heard that. Mm. Oh, there they are. Okay, so we have, we're not going to go through 884 of them. Um, so let's see. I want to see if I can find the ones where she actually commented. Um, here's one that said, and I'm going to like it while I'm here and I don't normally go to her, her channel. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm a nurse practitioner and absolutely agree with the delivery. Okay. So the delivery probably wasn't poor, um, being obese. However, you are considered high risk presently, so they may not be equipped to handle that, which is why they, and she kind of dot, dot, dot. So there's that one. And there's a whole lot that, you know said they should have explained it better. They probably did explain it exactly the way they needed to. And she's paraphrasing. Um, let's see. Let's see. Bottom line is being overweight in this scenario, along with any medical procedures for men, women, or children equal high risk or increased risk and high risk. This isn't a case of discriminatory practices, simply doctors working to avoid severe implications. Oh, that can occur in obese patients, especially when anesthesia is involved. At this point, would recommend you set expectations with the medical community accordingly. They aren't therapists. Their focus is on the safety and health of you and your child. And I already like that one. Um, it really isn't discriminating against obese people. It's about prioritizing your and baby's health. Being a bigger lady carries far more risk for both of you. Thank you. Oh, let's see. Um, an obese woman should only gain 10 to 15 pounds the whole pregnancy for your safety and that of the baby. This is common. And it is common. I saw it somewhere. Um, let's see. 
the BMI cap doesn't mean you're being discriminated against. The risk can be real, and I would rather you be in better hands. I think the, the, her delivery was 100%. See, again, you're not in the room, so you don't know if the actual delivery was actually poor. You are listening to the way Alex paraphrases it. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. As a bigger person who had a stillborn at 21 weeks due to complications due to my size. So take the recommendation of only gaining 10 pounds seriously. Let's see. It wasn't a rec recommendation as a requirement. Well, again, it's a requirement. So there's that. Uh, being obese and pregnant can be a high risk. They want to be sure if something arises that you and your baby are well taken care of. A 10 pound gain is what they hope for when you're already overweight. It is the best for both of you. <clears throat> it's actually 15 pounds and it's a recommendation. It shouldn't be a requirement. Oh my God. If you weigh 300 and fucking pounds. Here's the thing. The physicians and their partners, whatever, their offices, have to pay for malpractice insurance. If you're a dumbass and are doing things that you shouldn't be doing, they will fire your ass. Period. Physicians do it all the time. If you do not take care of yourself, they're not going to take the liability because you fucked up. Exactly. Here's another one. I thought your gastric to doctor told you this back when you had your surgery. You mentioned that you had to lose 100 pounds before trying to have a baby. This is why they told you before you started trying because it would be a high. They didn't tell her she just had to lose 100 pounds. That is it. They said they didn't tell her how many pounds she had to lose till she could try to have a baby. She just lost a hundred pounds, quote unquote, because her friends, quote unquote, her friends told her that they lost a hundred pounds and got pregnant. That's what she heard. The doctor did not tell her she only had to lose a hundred pounds. Even our physician said. Once you lose 100 pounds, we can take a look at it. Yeah, but he was like, I'd rather 18 months to 24 months. Exactly. Uh, so somebody says she lost over 100 pounds since surgery, which I still doubt. Uh, gaining 40 back doesn't count, by the way. <laughs> In her reality, it matters. Yeah, her heaviest equal heaviness equals because she has been working out. <laughs> so they, they, they are... Uh, they are, they are not, they're not going light on her. Um, let's see. She's not going to have a whole lot of comments. Working out since you are 10 doesn't make you big. Reality hurts, but take the recommendation for you and your baby's own good. Not everyone is discriminating. You and many big people go through this. You'll find and hear a lot of, and they leave off. I don't understand that. Um, uh, welcome to life as a mom. You come second now and forever. Pregnancy, birth, and childbearing is all stress and bombshells. In all seriousness, things can go wrong quickly in pregnancy and labor, and they are they are requiring what is medically, I'm assuming, needed. Um. Uh, let's see. This is a business and they're not meant to be your friends. You have to understand that something must have happened within that practice to make them implement the BMI rule and to take it as a blessing in disguise that you will be going to a new hospital that is more equipped to handle your pregnancy and complications that can arise. This will happen throughout your whole pregnancy. People will be up front. They won't tip your toe around your around dangerous situations and liabilities. 100%. Let me let me step in on this. So anytime that a patient presents themselves for transport to the uh, labor and delivery or ob -GYN floor at any hospital in this area that, that I work in, 
the nurses up there don't give a shit. They what they give a shit about the patients. They don't give a shit about your excuses. Whether it's, oh, I feel Braxton Hicks. Okay, well, that's probably not real. Here's the monitor. We're going to hook you up. Oh, wait, the monitor doesn't fit around you. Well, shit, how are we going to do this? I don't know, but I guess we're going to have to tape it on. They don't care about how they do it. They just care about caring for the patient. If you go to any ob any labor and delivery unit, and expect somebody to hold your hand, you better hope that it's family or your non-existent hub- husband at this point in time, <laughs> because they're the only ones that are going to do it. That doctor, when your birth thing is going to come in, birth the baby, cut the cord, and that's it, and then they're out. They don't give a shit. If you don't manage yourself, this will be an un- unsuccessful or endangered pregnancy. Mm-hmm. Period. Well, here's another one. Did you just say you're seeing a midwife? That is extremely dangerous. The fact that you are high risk and she is high risk at her mm-hmm. size. You need to be seeing a doctor, not a nurse. Yeah. I'm any, scared for you. Any mid, any midwife or doula should look at her and go, no, you need to go back to your ob mm-hmm. Period. Again, you don't need to take that liability. It's the same thing as if, you call your physician's office and say, hey, I'm having chest pain. They're going to say, hey, call 911. <laughs> it's their Pretty liability. Much. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I don't think you've come to terms with how incredibly high risk your pregnancy is. You'll be fine. Don't get me wrong. But it makes sense. You need specialized care. But no, no, no. She won't be fine. No, she I won't hope, be. I hope she is. She won't be. Yeah. You are nearly 200 pounds overweight and in no way because you're full of muscle. That's the truth of it. Oh, let me like that one. Um, It's not discriminatory. It's medicine and science trying to protect you and your child. Period. (coughs) Uh, (laughs) I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to be mean, but please stop saying you're working out every day, working out someone who has five kids and eight pregnancies and not on a small size. You knew you're oversized. You knew it will be a high risk pregnancy. You're only 10 weeks. There's 30 more to go. You have no clue how fast things change in pregnancy. Do you be mad at doctors for something you already knew can happen? The only one that's safe for best uh, safe for you and your baby. But the, the thing that gets me is she made the announcement or they, whatever made the announcement before the first trimester was over. She's not out of the woods by any stretch of the means. This is the most, important time in the pregnancy. I know a lot of people that don't announce it until they are halfway through the second trimester. She is setting herself up for failure and a lot of heartache and mental anguish if this thing goes south. And again, I hope it does not. I hope it is successful. I hope the baby is healthy. I hope she is healthy, but we have to keep in mind that that's, yeah, no. Mm-hmm. Um, let me scroll down and see if I can find the ones where she replied to, because I know there's a good one where she replied to. I have to scroll down way, way far, because obviously she gave up somewhere. Aha! I, as well, have never heard of this, and I was getting upset with with. You, up until you said thin privilege. Are you kidding me? So you're discriminating against thin people as you're complaining about people discriminating against you for being overweight. How is pointing out the fact that thin people don't deal with the same discrimination as overweight people discrimination itself? It's not. It's I'm not discriminating against thin people. L-M-A-O. That's literally the phrase. My thin friend. She has to specify that it's a thin friend. Uh, Use thin people don't have to think about these things, which is a privilege. It's not to say anyone is better than anyone. You're delusional. You fat fucking cow. (laughs) It's not privilege it is not a privilege to be thin it's not it is not a privilege to be thin holy fuck so 
if an anorexic, you don't think the doctor would raise tons of, if an anorexic woman, one man went to the doctor, you don't think the doctor would raise tons of concern for the health of the mother and the baby get, get the fuck out is what I think what she was trying to say. I can't believe she just called you delusional when she said her BMI is high because she's muscular. <laughs> also, no one needs to be told your BMI to know you're obese and unhealthy. Oh, my God. <laughs> if you can grow fungus anywhere on your body, that's unhealthy. Uh, exactly, Loretta. Then people have problems with pregnancy, too. I just stated earlier in the live that I have a girl that I went to high school with who is thin. She has thin privilege. And she had preeclampsia, and her child was born at 26 weeks. Her child has vision problems, had a feeding tube and a G button, and is autistic. Now. So, you know, I guess her thin privilege went a little too much. Um, let's see. I don't know if there was any more that she replied to, but she did reply to that one. Thin pri is thin privilege a thing now? <laughs> always has been, always will be, whatever. Um, let's that's, that's saying white privilege and black privilege. They don't, not even going to get on that one. You're using nomenclature that is false. That's like again vagina privilege. Do we have do we have vagina privilege? Ladies, do we get vagina privilege? I guess we do at the strip club, right? <laughs> okay, here's one that she replied to, I think. Let's see. Um I understand how your feelings are involved in hormone into play. I just feel like, I would just look at it like, fine, you are inadequate to care for me and my child. There is all, they're also a business and all day they, they should care about you. They don't want to get sued. Grateful that you can get care and have, okay, well, sure. But I certainly think it could have been handled much better. Oh Lord, shut the fuck up. Oh Lord, shut the fuck up. The only thing, uh, so people are telling her that a midwife is not the way to go. Um, she's not going to tell us what the BMI, uh, where is it? Eleonora, um, she's not going to tell us what the BMI cap is because then we'd figure out what her weight is. Uh, so we're not going to know that. Um, let's see. Oh, some of the early ones um, are, girl, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I'm so sorry you went through if you, if you shut the fuck up. If, you, if they are supporting her at this point, they are oblivious. Yeah. Let's see. This broke my heart. Oh, shut up. Okay, I don't know how many more, and I know you guys. Um, you know what? Jane was on Allen's. <sighs> Let's see. I don't know how many more she replied to. She's only going to reply to the ones that kiss her ass. Yeah. No, she replied to ones that didn't kiss her ass. She was nasty and hateful about it. Um. Why are people so insensitive? You didn't deserve that. Again, we weren't there. We're just going by what she says and how she portrayed it. It was probably, hey, listen, this is this is the gist of it. Um, it's a new policy. It changes. We have we are within our rights to change our policy. Um as someone who is very within their rights to change their comment policy, a medical office is in within their right uh, rights. Oh, I suggest you put in a review for that previous doctor. Whatever. Yeah, and the, mm, 
here, do this. If you, if you have an issue, contact the Rhode Island Physician Licensing Services or department. Make the complaint and see what happens then. Yeah. No wonder your doctor left that practice. It kind of lines up, honestly. No, it doesn't. And if it lined up, then why didn't you find out where she went? So you could have her as a doctor still, so she could hold your fucking hand and sing Kumbaya with you when you're giving birth. Okay, I don't know how many more she replied to, but, you know, she liked a few of them. And there's a whole bunch that say, hey, what's the cap? What's the cap? What's the cap? You're 10 pounds away. What's the cap? We're never going to know because then we'd have to, we'd figure out her, her, her weight. We all know she's over 300 pounds. She can say she's under two, under 300, but she's not. Um, how many think by a show of hands, um, that she's going to be a size 18 through her whole pregnancy? I'll wait. I need to get a drink of water. She actually had like almost a thousand comments. She has 800 and something comments. That's a lot for her. Fingers must be busy trying to type all of that. You didn't get a new doctor. She got a midwife. There's a, there's a difference, right? Mm -hmm. There's a very distinct difference. She's going to be a size 18. And see, Heidi, I think she's uh, I think she's a good 320. <laughs> Sarcastic J. She'll be a 16. <laughs> because the baby's riding high. And the baby is riding high, he says. Thank you for sharing. This is horrible. Denying health care is not right. They weren't whoa, denying whoa, you health care. Whoa, they are not denying he health care. They are protecting their ass. And rightly so. Oh my God. This is literally insane. No, it's not literally. I hate when people use the word literally, literally. wrong. Alex uses it wrong. My daughter uses it oh. wrong. And it drives me fucking insane. My mouth is on the floor as a plus size gal with two perfectly healthy pregnancies. I am so sorry. You're a plus size gal. You're not morbidly obese. Secret service. They repeatedly made me feel bad for being overweight and overweight, but I never heard of a BMI cap. Even if rules are rules, whatever. They know you were they knew you were trying. Why didn't they tell why didn't they tell you this so long ago? Right? How the hell did I not know about this? Fuck me sideways, man. She mm. She is the stupidest 30. Okay. She's probably not the stupidest. Yeah, she's the stupidest 31 year old I've ever heard of. Um, my God. Okay. So, all the ones early on are, oh my God, I'm so sorry for you. You are not an empath. Oh my God. She's not an empath. She wouldn't be such a fucking cunt if she was an empath. So, okay. Well, that was fun. Um, that was so, so fun. She identifies as a size 18. <laughs> well, then I identify as a 12 inch. <laughs> I sure hope y'all heard that. <laughs> oh, my God. Hold on, Shana. I'll get there. Okay, let's see. Okay, so we have like to dislike is. Wait, I know I need to go back and sh I need to share the screen. Hold on just a second. So my husband wants to identify as 12 inches, y'all. Just an FYI. Um, so it is. <laughs> after, <laughs> after dark is real y'all uh likes to dislikes 22.4 thousand 
likes, 3.4 dislikes. And you can see I made the effort to go over here and boom it. Down it. <sighs> no, have, Sarah T, have you seen his thumb? No. Mm -mm. Nope. I, I'm just saying. Just, 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 mm, no. Nope. Mm -mm. Look at his hands next time. If, if he shows his hands. So, I hope you guys had fun with our country shade after dark fueled by a bloody maria um uh so tomorrow's wednesday yours giving low tea uh, i mean he did have to go get his blood work done and i know it wasn't for lasik because i don't think they did that i don't think they take blood work for lasik fyi um so you guys have a great rest of your evening. If there is any left, I'm going to go check on my baby chickens and pull out my book that I'm reading. I'm reading The Stand. I know it's old. My stepdad gave it to me and told me I needed to read it. <laughs> Thanks, Tara and Mr. 12 Inch Texas. <laughs> you guys have pumped his, pumped him up. So, you know, he said something about Nookie the other day. So there's that. He's shaking his head at me. You guys have a great night. Have a good Wednesday. And we'll I'll probably see you, talk to you on Thursday. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.